Hey everybody, my name is Lake. It's 1985. This is my review of Transformers Prime Robots in Disguise Deluxe Class Arachnid. And before we take a look at the figure herself, let's take a look at the packaging. Really cool artwork there of the character. Of course she is a Decepticon. And you got the stats on the side of the package here as well as a uh, headshot of Arachnid. And of course you have the obligatory robot and vehicle forms on the back, as well as a bio. So, looking at the figure, uh, one thing you're going to notice, of course, is the fact that on the sides of the helicopter mode are these very odd, very weird looking uh, weapons here. And they, yes, they are weird. Yes, they are out of place, but they are very nicely sculpted, very nicely detailed. And they both have uh, two pegs. Uh, so what you can do, instead of having it like this, you can uh, put them like this uh, for this type of effect. So there's that. And uh, here's just a look at the actual vehicle form without those ugly looking uh, weapons. Well, not ugly, but weird looking weapons uh, attached to the side. And, of course, you got the purple blades here. You got three blades, uh, which, of course, are going to become three, like, spider legs in the robot form. You can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, you can see the shape of the heel here, so this is going to be the leg. And uh, the arm's going to come out the side here. Uh, the canopy here, it does... Uh, open up uh, for the transformation and you can see inside there actually is a chair made of uh, translucent purple plastic and on the nose here you have a nice little Decepticon symbol so size uh, let me bring in Hotshot aka Bumblebee sports car helicopter and you can see they are out of scale uh, obviously the helicopter should be much larger in relation to the sports car. So there is that, and uh, we'll get more into that uh, towards the end of the review. But with that said, let me go ahead and transform this figure. Uh, directions tell you you can actually pop off the rotor here. I'm not going to, but you can. Uh, second thing you want to do according to instructions is pop open the canopy like that, fold in the nose, and then grab onto the sides here, pull these out, these panels. And looking at it like this, you can see these have become the arms. And here, this joint right here is always the, the tricky part. Not tricky, but just hard to stiff, I should say, like that. Get that down there. Uh, go ahead and uh, bend the elbows a little bit. And then rotate out the hands. And you've got the arms done. Coming back here, this whole section here is going to lift up. or you can look at it as the legs are going to lift and detach from that. So let me go ahead and get that out of the way here. You can see there that folds uh, out. Uh, these fold back, uh, separate. They're on ball joints here. Separate the legs. And you really don't have to do anything with the legs except you have articulation there. As you can see, I'll get more into that as well. And finally, well not finally, but uh, second to last, you want to take the... Uh, uh, section here, the canopy, and bring up the head. You want to make sure it all the way locks into place like that. Then you know you got it right. Then, as for the blades here, there is this little uh, tab here that sticks out, and this is going to correspond with this slot, which means this folds up like this and should attach like that. And looking at the figure from the front, you're going to fold forward little spider legs or rotors. They bend at that point, as you can see. And let me see, this came loose here for some odd reason. And the figure does take a little bit of time to, to the balance. Uh, she's got these long, spindly legs, which they, she should as a uh, fembot or female character in the... Uh, Prime show. So let me see if I can get her to stand here. There we go. 
And while she's standing, let me go ahead and uh, show you some size comparisons with some other uh, Deluxe Class Transformers Primes figures. I don't know why this keeps popping out. Must be something I'm not quite doing right, but that's the general idea. So, Deluxe Class Soundwave. And he also has problems standing as well. Come on. There we go. This guy right here. So you got the deluxe figures all in a row, Decepticons. You can see in, in robot mode, she does actually scale pretty well, I guess, to the other figures. And finally, let me bring in Lord Megatron. And you can see there. Pull the camera back a little bit if I can. So there you go, size comparison in robot mode. So let me get these guys out of the way here. And of course you can plug in the weapons if you want. Uh, I think they actually plug in. There's a a peg hole at the bot at the palm of our hands, so you can plug in the weapons as such, or you know stick them in the uh, peg holes there. So there's that. I think I'm going to be displaying her without the weapons though. I think she looks better that way. Uh, articulation. Let me go over articulation. Articulation, excuse me. Uh, the head, as we take a look at the very nice head sculpt, let's just take a few seconds to, to admire that head sculpt. Really nice. As we take a look at the head sculpt, you can see there's the uh, a Decepticon symbol there on the chest. Anyhow, the head uh, does appear to be on a ball joint, although you do have limited articulation. And if you look back here, the head actually is connected to the, the pilot chair, which is that translucent uh, purple plastic there behind her head. So you do have articulation, but you can actually get the head to go side to side, uh, turn just quite a bit, a little bit, I should say. I should say. And uh, then you have articulation at the shoulders here. Articulation at the elbows, like that. The hand really doesn't have any articulation, really. Um, hips are a little bit problematic, even though they're on ball joints. There's just not enough clearance to get the, the legs to move very far. You end up clashing with this back here. But there is a, a joint there. And then you have a bend at the uh, knee, which is just a swivel. So that is articulation for Arachnid, and uh, I think the the head sculpt's great. The overall shape is very feminine, very uh, fembotish, if you will. Um, but like I said, or like I'm going to say, the this figure would have been really cool as a Voyager class figure. Um, I would imagine that Hasbro, with a larger figure could have engineered the figure such that instead of having just the three legs, she could at least have six legs. I think she might have just six legs in the show or eight legs. Feel free to correct me, but I th it's more than three for sure. Because she, uh, in vehicle form, she actually hovers, not hovers, but the legs provide support and she uh, uses the legs as a means to uh, get over the terrain. So it would have been nice to have a larger figure, the capability to actually have the, the spider legs support the vehicle form so that she can you know you can portray the figure like you like she is portrayed in the actual show uh, that would have been nice and 